Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to our movie club. Today we continue with uh, Better Than Us. And not only continue, but we are about to finish it, right? So today is the, the last two series, two, the last two episodes of this series. And I don't know, are you excited or not? Let's see. <laughs> That's it's ended. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the, let's go directly to the questions because I think we have more of them. This was pretty, there are a lot of actions in these two series, episodes. So let's start with number one. Well, could you help us? It's number one. Lara goes to see Dr. Valash with cash for the operation. What happens? Uh, Dr. Valash diagnosed her uh, that uh, no one can say can save her. Yeah, so she is what the word was in, inoperable, right? So they cannot make a surgery for her. They cannot save her, right? Mm -hmm. Do you remember why? No. As far as I remember, because this tumor, this tumor that she has is close to vital centers. So they cannot be sure that they can, you know, remove it without touching anything else, right? So that's why later they need a reason, right? To be precise on this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how how we call this, uh, you know, uh, diagnosis process? Is it medical observation? Examination maybe, right? So, so they examined her, or they, what they did? They did MRI, teacher, what do you think? We just call it diagnosis. Diagnosis, okay. Look. Or or sometimes you might hear prognosis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I, I remember this picture. So it was a picture of her, uh, what we call it, like blood, vidicular, so how it's called, vidicular pipes, right? On the, on the picture. So I, I, I wonder what kind of examination it was. It was kind of... Uh, oh, oh, MRI probably. MRI probably. Or, or... Advanced technology in the series, it might not have been real, but normally we call it uh, magnetic resonance interference or something like that. Yeah, and it's, uh, I did it once. So they first uh, kind of inject some liquid into your blood. And then after time, so it's kind of this liquid is it inside your body, inside all this, you know, blood pipes. I forgot how uh -huh. to call them. And they, they kind of... <laughs> I don't know what they do. They do some kind of magnetic field um, examination and see all your yeah. kind of blood pipes. How we call these pipes? Actually, vinacular. Oh, oh, vessels, just blood vessels. Blood vessels. Okay. Yeah, blood vessels. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, Nesma, what Maslov did regarding Svetlana in this episode? Um, he wanted to get the. <laughs> To see her, so he used a, a drone with a camera, um, but a, a bodyguard chased after him. Then he uh, came back to the guard and gave him money, so mm -hmm. he can talk to Svetlana. But but she was not able to talk at all. But at least he saw her. She was drugged. Yeah. Well, as far as my, my experience with you know with Russian uh, hospitals, if you if they don't allow you to go in, you just have to pay a little bit. <laughs> <That's not a problem. laughs> Maybe it's changed in you know, the beautiful Russia of future, as in this movie. But <laughs> I've never tried to bribe anybody, so I don't know. Yeah, they don't. It really is. You know, they never call it like a bribing, like a gift. You always say, you know. It's, you know, for improving your hospital. So take it, please. Buy something for your hospital. <laughs> I'd better not to talk about that. Uh, but if you, uh, you know. Con <laughs> let me contribute to your child's college fund. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, and so Maslowski offered to pay money to get her of the drugs, right? Teacher Livro. So actually it's kind of interfere in your health treatment, right? So it's kind of illegal thing, I guess. Okay, Vasan, could you please take next one? Number three. He goes to attempt to disable the cycle monitor bracelet. Oh yeah, he got tried to 
figure from that bracelet because the bracelet can be used to track her GPS position. So um, she cannot go away from that hospital. So she uh, he tried to buy a gadget to uh, uh, remove that bracelet or de de deactivate it. But the shopkeeper um, sold him some fake product to him. So yeah, that was the first attempt. Once uh, Lara found out that it's a fake product and told him about it, uh, he again uh, seeked help from Lara, I think. Uh, she, she, she helped him to you know, cover the uh, tracking device. Okay. Yeah, this is Igor was kind of kind of right that he went to some uh, shop to ask about this gem mm -hmm. device because I think if you Google this, you know how to get rid of <laughs> Uncle Bassett, <laughs> it will it will lead to some troubles. I would say it's like googling how can I make a bomb, you know, or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Might show up on the KGB's monitor screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But in, in your country, do police use this uncle borrow bracelets? Because yes. I have seen them only only in the movies, you know. I, I, I don't think we use them. We have them, but it's not something you know care about. No. It's probably for some kind of I don't know, famous cases or something. So what's the reason for this bracelet? If you can just put people in the jail, right? You're non-violent. If you're non-violent, mm -hmm. they'll allow you to stay home so you can like go work. And they just monitor where you go. You might be restricted to home and work. Monitor the bracelet. And as long as you're going from home to work, you don't go anywhere else. They allow you to stay home to give you some freedom of movement. Yeah. But if you go places, you know, drug dealer, you know, <laughs> street corners and things, they'll they'll probably arrest you and put you in. It's more of a courtesy when it's a nonviolent crime. I see. I see. Yeah. In my, I, I remember COVID time. Do you remember COVID time when we had to sit at home and not to leave our houses? I remember... Yeah. If you was diagnosed with COVID in Moscow, they put on your phone special uh, application that monitor you, and in random time that makes you make photo and send GPS address. Oh, yeah, man. it was a nightmare because application was terrible because it's made by government and people got fined for nothing just because you know yeah. you cannot hear the signal or something. So it was a it was a nightmare. I remember. I dread the day when the U.S. does that. That'll be, we'll have no privacy at all once that happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They can probably do it anyway with your cell phone. We just don't know it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, what, what was the guy who left America? For Snowden, Snowden, right? Snowden uh, revealed some information that we already have. It. It's kind of, it has a name. Yeah. What sounds uh, please? Yeah, such ankle bracelet implies that you are incapable of monitoring a suspect or uh, some somebody. Usually, we use the uh, handcuffs, you know, usual um, handcuffs for um, detaining somebody. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, such uh, GPS uh, you know, enabled bracelets used in you know animals, you know, to yeah. track them to track their position and everything. So, in such research for. for uh, facilities they use that but not uh, in, in any human mm -hmm. uh, do, do you know this device called air tag or something so it's from iphone ecosystem so it's air tag it's a small device you can put it somewhere and it's kind of a sensor i would say so you can see where's your belongings usually people put it in your suitcase or something so recently i had a story that my uh, friend he had a flight and they lost his dog and uh, somewhere with, with, with luggage, with everything, they lost, their company, they lost his dog and dog had an air tag on the collar 
and that's allowed to find it in the airport. So he went there in the port and found it. So good, good idea so, to have this on pets. I've also read that some men and boyfriends put it in, in their girlfriends or wives' purse or yeah. somewhere so they can track them everywhere. So it can be a, a bad yeah. use also. And you know, actually, what is interesting? I, I'm not a fan of Apple, but something they do very good. And know what they did. If you have an iPhone and let's say your husband put uh, air tag somewhere of you, they they know that you travel together and they write you a message. We detected that one of air tags travel with you. Are you aware of this or not? <laughs> so it's kind of a good idea. I, 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 I give them a credit for this. But usually the man doesn't need to travel with you. He just needs to know where you are on his phone. Yeah, but exactly. You see, if if let's say you put your air tag with me, so Apple will send me a message that there is an air tag that travels with me for a long time. Oh, from another phone. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. Okay, good, good, good. Yes, that's interesting. <laughs> okay, let's uh, go forward. Uh, Gerard, could you please take number four? Okay. Describe Barlamov and Irina's scheme to trap sub mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, Sopanev, uh, um, Barlamov uh, made a call to Irina and told her that he wanted to investigate more about the, the murder of the police officer. And he said that he was looking for witnesses. And Sapanov was was eavesdropping and was worried about, about that. So that's that's the way they put. Yeah. So they played kind of an act, right? So they pretended. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it was not a drama, but they played detective, right? They they made him believe that something is happening mm -hmm. and kind of pick the interest of him. <laughs> that was an interesting one. I like this part. <laughs> okay, the next one, Vova, could you please help us? Uh, five? Yep. Describe what Victor hopes will happen in the second tender hound where he so must operate on a human. Mm -hmm. uh, Victor uh, hopes uh, that Ahisa will fail something uh, because he wants he wants uh he wants your to not be uh to the tender right actually yeah so we remember that he cannot produce this Alisa robot right mm -hmm. so if he win the tender he need to produce a lot of Arisas, right? <laughs> but how? <laughs> so his interest was to fail the tender, right? And what can be more kind of <laughs> convincing that kill a people during kill a kill a kill a human during the tender? Right? So after that, it's obviously a fail. Yeah. Good one. Okay. Nesma, can you can you get next one number six? Uh, when Georgie tries to train Arisa to deliberately make a mistake during surgery, what happened? Uh, he failed because she is um, it's so good and precise that she cannot make a mistake. So the plan will fail. They had to look for, a, for plan B. Yeah, and I, I like another part that teacher Lee wrote here. Do you remember uh, from this exercise we learned that Arisa has some ethical, you know, uh, rules, right? So we remember that she said that there are no Isaac rules in, in her, right? But at the same time, she would not uh, harm a human. Interesting one. For, for no purpose. She would only harm human uh, and protection of her family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, interesting. And they told her, don't kill a human anymore. So she kind of, you know, is following his direction too <laughs> so, yeah. yeah well let's see it was a short one this one could you please take the next one uh, what suggestion does laura make to georgie that can legitimately 
with me, get a reset, make a minute. So Laura suggests that Georgie asks a reset to follow a certain pattern of a re um, of, a, of an operation that already failed. So she's going to make it successfully uh, as an imitation of a failed operation. <clears throat> so the target will be uh, achieved. Uh, but he couldn't. Why? Uh, because even the the operation that that, that Arista found was Boris, the son of uh, Vic. She could found uh, she could find um, a way to fix. Yeah. yeah, to fix the procedure, right? To get a good result. Yeah. What yeah. a robot! What a robot! We need this robot <laughs> instead of our doctors, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would trust her instead of any doctor. But actually, yeah. this makes me feel like uh, Vic was uh, right about Georgie, that Georgie was not good enough for operating on um, on the kid Boris. So now Arisa can find a way, right? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say he wasn't good enough, but there was a way he didn't think of that yeah. could have saved the boy. But, yeah. but he is—he wasn't even curious to know. He tried to tell him that he could have done so and so, but he stopped her, right? Well, remember when when Arisa said, "Georgie, I looked at your operation. I found a way that could have." Well, there was a way that could have saved the boy. So he asked her, do you mean I could have saved the boy, but I killed him? And she didn't answer the question. She said, I don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Learned that from her sex tapes or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> didn't want to guilt him. Yeah. yeah, but answer is yes, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he knew the answer, but she wouldn't say the answer. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want to add something, right? Yes. There's a saying that says, it's not worth to cry over a spilled milk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I guess, uh, I guess, as a doctor, he should know what mistake he did, so he wouldn't do it again, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, good, a good. Lot in Another thing, it looks like uh, Arisa's AI is the most powerful AI of the world, you know? And it's <laughs> yeah. just one robot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One of a kind. Yeah. But you know, probably, I don't think that Georgie is kind of guilty because, you know, these robots, they are. They are not humans, right? They can, they can, they can be more precise, more kind of concentrated, and don't make mistakes. They human cannot avoid. Both yeah, they can. They can. Go ahead. At least he should have showed some good intentions, you know, like knowing what mistakes uh, he did, so he wouldn't do this again. Because he is now, uh, he wants the good for the patient. I suppose mm -hmm. so. Yep. Right. But an, an AI has an advantage over a human. The AI can can run simulations. If I do and this and this and this, will that work? No. If I do this and this and this and this, and it can try like millions of different ways to do something, and it can find a successful way. Mm -hmm. A human brain can't do that. So it's not really Georgie's fault. Yeah. She just had capabilities that he didn't have. <laughs> I know that now already we have a lot of kind of surgery made by robots. And the reason is that people cannot be so kind of careful as robots. But it's not like robots like you think, like uh, like Arisa. It's just, you know, small manipulator that like, yeah. works with uh, sound. Yeah, they can blow it up real big like a magnifier, you know, a microscope. And yeah. unbelievable, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go to the competition. Um, Gerard, could you help us with number eight? And yes. What is the competition for Risa in the second round of the tender? I don't remember. Uh, You're coming with me. Ah, the poly robot, the robot. <laughs> <laughs> <I thought. laughs> A Robocop. <laughs> Didn't they watch the 80s movie? <laughs> Uh, yes, a robot that would have paused a lot. 
I think it's a very dangerous idea. <laughs> yeah, remember the the chairman of the board or whatever said, "We don't want to let him win." Why not? We don't want a RoboCop. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a stupid idea, right? By all means. So we kind of try to improve your life. How? We make you a RoboCop. You know? No <laughs> sense, right? I don't need it. <laughs> yeah, give Rob power over humans. That'll really make robots popular. <laughs> yeah, really strange. Okay. <laughs> Uh, what sounds? Please take next one. The ninth one. Nine. Yes. Yeah. What prompts uh, slow key to want uh, to remove a resource blocking chip? Yes. Um, because Svetlana was predated by the uh, her husband, and so he bribed all the medical professionals so he couldn't get into that hospital too so in order to save Svetlana uh, he uh, need he needed Ariza's help so um, and also wanted to make a deal with her so he removed the chip and asked a favor uh, of you know, winning the competition and also to get you know get rid of yeah. Svetlana's husband too. Mm -hmm. so do you recognize the line until death do us apart? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a, it, I think it's a kind of uh, obey that we do in the church, right? You should do during the marriage. It's part of the wedding vow. Mm -hmm. Do you take this woman to be yours? In richness and yeah, yeah. richer for her for for health, blah blah blah. Till death do you. <laughs> so you're going to stay married until one of you dies. So it's like an eternal wedding vow. Yeah. Yeah, but it's 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 take place in the church, right? Not in official uh, kind of. Correct. Yeah. Correct. When you're saying I do, <laughs> yeah. the wedding vows. When you say I do, do you take this? For your wife, I do. Yeah, when they that's that vow they say, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and only so, in the church. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting that we have so many kind of strange traditions and rituals, right? So, does anyone know something that can prevent this marriage? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, but it all, all of this doesn't exist in my country. We just you know answer one question: Do you agree? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so unromantic. <laughs> yeah. Just practical, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, Vova, please, number 10. Uh, when Gleb tells George that his uh, patient must die, must die, must die uh, what solution is found? Uh, Gleb, uh, Gleb found Laha and Laha and uh, Laha will be the patient that must die because uh, no human can save him, only robot. Yeah, so Lara knew that she is going to die, right? So she just sees this, accepted this like an inevitable chain of events, right? So why not get money out of this? As far as how I understand it, yeah, yeah. okay, good. Um, does what sounds could you please help us with number 11? Yeah, what does Georgie do regarding Lara and her mom? Lena? Uh, Georgie visited Elena and tried to tell that Lara was dying. Um, and it's kind of uh, fulfilling her last wish, you know. Uh, on her deathbed, he wanted her mom uh, nearby her. And yes, um, he made it. And he let her mom visit her uh, before the uh, surgery. And they had some chat. Somehow conveyed their love. Everything. Yeah. 
well, people saw Australia, right? So <laughs> Elena was not uh, uh, worried about Lara, about her daughter at all, right? But knowing that uh, Lara is going to die changes everything, right? So why? You'd better, <laughs> you'd better care about living humans than about <laughs> those who is going to die. So we watch yeah. it. So this is where we would say Laura and her mom were estranged, estranged. And that means that they kind of didn't talk to each other. They kind of hated each other and didn't speak. Mm -hmm. and what had happened when Laura had a baby a long time ago, she was young and I think on drugs. So she gave her baby to her mom to take care of and then they got separated and mom raised the daughter to think that she was the mom. And the daughter didn't know who Laura was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Georgie wanted Laura's mind to be in a good mood to increase her chances of survival. So he wanted to bring the estranged, uh, you know, couple back together. So he told mom, your daughter's going to die soon. So you'd better say sorry and make up, you know. <clears throat> and the way how, how you wrote it, you wrote it in the chat, actually. He patched the rift between Lara and her mom. Right. <laughs> Sounds like a poem. poem. <laughs> like a bricklayer, yeah, bricklayer. <laughs> we'll yeah. fix this crack. Nice <laughs> yeah. one. Could you please take next one, 12? Yeah. Uh, why does Irina uh, repetitiously inject an and knock out serum into Georgie. Yeah. You mean Aris? I Arisa, yeah. Arisa. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Myself. He, he didn't want him to stop her from uh, doing the operation on uh, Lara. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, he set a timer for for <laughs> my guy. Yeah, to, to wake him up, to allow him to see the patient after the operation has done. Okay. Correct. Yeah, Nesma, nice, nice help me understand what that means surreptitiously. Is it a <laughs> surprise or what? I was, I was afraid of this question. <laughs> 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 uh, I mean, on purpose? <laughs> yep, secretly. So kind of a little bit surprisingly, right? So, so you don't expect it. I think and what came about, up from behind him. Yeah, came up from behind him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what about serum? Is it uh, from I don't know, chemical it's element? Like the chemical. When you have a hypodermic needle, the chemical inside the needle we call that serum. I see. Oh, That's what it. you inject into the blood system. Oh, what about yeah. the the other one of the sweet? You know that sweet liquid on. In the back. Talking about the IV bottle? Yes, I think it's him so. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what you're talking about. The, the, IV, the IV bottle. Yeah, bottles. that's just sugar water. Yeah. Or, oh, yeah. Or saline, saline solution, salt water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Gerard, could you please take the next one? Uh, describe. The briefing that Victor gives the onlookers just prior to Arisa beginning her operation. Mm. Have a hint. Okay. So she believes the, the, the others that Arisa is able to perform a complex surgery. No, no, no. But he was expecting that Arisa would, would fail. Mm -hmm. He wanted to lose the tender, so because now the, he has the control of the company, so he he can take the money of the company and go away. <laughs> he doesn't yeah, need, but, mm -hmm. but he yeah. can't say that. He he has to yeah. in public. He says robots are going to save humans. They're going to be mm -hmm. wonderful. They're going to be tremendous. He's going to do the first operation in history. You know, we're we're going we're making history today. You know, he's got a pump it up real high, you know. <laughs> Do you know what I'm I'm a little surprised, you know, that Arisa 
is made in China, but she looks like a Russian woman. <laughs> <laughs> so she's she would be a you know a wife of a Chinese guy. Yeah. It was Good made point. for Russians, you know. <laughs> so yeah. she has the taste to me. Yeah. To me, the taste of Russian. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, good point. So how we call this kind of behavior hypocrisy, right? So he's saying Hypocr one thing, hypocrisy, yeah. But but yeah. Don't, does not believe it at all, right? So his his motives are different, you know. So what right. what, what politicians always do, right? We should care about your kids. That's yeah. why we, you know, tax you and put you without freedom and everything. So yeah. it's for your own good. <laughs> yep, yep. There is no danger. <laughs> you know, the, the patient signed all the paperwork. We can't be sued, and there's no danger to her life, you know. <laughs> okay, yeah. what was the outcome of Arisa's surgery on Lara? So let me answer this, because it's a simple one. <laughs> <laughs> so Arisa saved Lara, right? It was... <laughs> She survived it and it was unexpected for everyone and kind of game changer, right? For the story. So nobody expected. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next one. Final confrontation. Uh Vasans, could you please help us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Final confrontation in Arizona Victor at the end of this chapter. Victor means uh, the bad guy, uh, the CEO of Chrono. Is that right? She, yeah, she approaches Victor and he pulls out his oh. button. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, he, he was uh, worried that Narisa would uh, uh, harm him, but it, it, uh, she uh, offered him a deal. You know? She said that. I, I can be yours, you know, like that. So then he requested his assistant to you know, reset her, um, her, her memory and, uh, and believed that he is the you know, uh, first user after, after that, you know. He said, I'm yours. Yeah. <laughs> I just understood that you was the only one who cared about me. <laughs> and it's true, actually, right? George was never interested. George was just saying, go away, right? And Victor, <laughs> after all, after all, he was the only one, you know, who wanted Teresa, who needed Teresa. Yeah, yeah funny, fun, fun enough. I think we can see that in human relations, human relationships always kind of broken, right? So <laughs> this is like this. Okay, it is the end of the episode uh, 15. I think we covered it perfectly. At uh, episode 16, I would say it, it's uh, kind of final and uh, we, I would call it like conclusion, right? So we'll learn what happened with everyone. So let's summarize it. Let's see. Well, could you please start with number one? Uh, describe Ahisa's condition at the start of this final episode. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Ahisa was by Victor uh, on his side mm -hmm. and she was uh, ah, ah, she she uh, must have erased her memory. Mm -hmm. Do you know the phrase taken as granted? No? So it's, you know, it's something that you don't deserve, but you just have it, you know? So you just have it just because, you know, you born in the rich country, so you have a car, a house and everything, and you take it as granted. So you you don't think you should work for this. It's just given you, you know? So George, I think, was taking as granted this Arisa's uh, dedication to him. And now he learns that it can be another way. <laughs> <laughs> and he surprised a lot, I would say. <laughs> yeah. yep. She pushed him down and said, go away. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Gerard, could you please take number two? What event is scheduled to happen today at the Kronos factory in Cop Coptero? Copter, 
Okay, uh, I think Victor is going to show the minister, the factory, the production of the new Arisa robots, and he wants to blow up the factory in front of them. So he doesn't look that he did that. So he wants to show that he's surprised of uh, the factory blowing up. And he wants to blame the the liquid liquidators. Yeah, yeah. He needs to do something with this production facility, right? Not to pr mm -hmm. produce the robot, yeah. Teacher wrote a ribbon cutting ceremony. Do you have this? You know, with a big scissors, you cut the uh, what we call it ribbon, right? Just to say yeah. we start this production today. <laughs> it's a political thing. Yeah, they usually get the mail or some high-level politician to do it, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you Is do that, that the ribbon the color of the, of the national flag, usually? No, just uh, any ribbon. Oh, okay. usually, usually it's red. Yeah, okay. yeah, right, right, yeah. Yeah, we have this everywhere, and all the politicians like this, like, you know, like, <laughs> like it's their, you know, success. It's not like another business opened it. Yeah, it's yeah. solely their success. So they were working hard for this. So it's usually, <laughs> and sometimes, you know, there are huge scissors, and like five or six politicians take them together, you know, to show that we all work it for this. <laughs> yeah, everyone takes a little piece of the ribbon, a souvenir, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, always funny. And I, I remember another thing. I remember that uh, during the movie they were wearing white helmets. I remember we shared this once with Sergey that white helmet it's merely boss on the factory. So all the people wear orange one, and white oh, yeah. means you know someone important is here, an engineer. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Nesma, could you please take number three? Since the factory cannot produce an erase about following this opening ceremony, what is his plan to save himself from embarrassment and disgrace? He thought like um, getting one of the uh, liquidators to ruin or to, to bomb the uh, factory. So now this is an external factor that ruined the operation. As if he was ready to produce uh, more erases, but, but the terrorists. Uh, or liquidator top him. So bombing the factory. Yeah. That's what do you think about Gleb? He's a smart guy, right? Uh, yeah, I guess yes. <laughs> 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 but he he could tell when to escape to escape the situation. So this tells me that he's a businessman after all. He's mm -hmm. looking for his own interest, not he's not loyal to his uh, customers. <laughs> Yeah, but I like how, how he found solution, you know, so it's bad there and there, so let's combine it together, you know, and blow up uh, factory, liquidators all together, and we are, you know, all white, so no problem with us. <laughs> I, I like it. I, I, well, I think this is temporary a solution because, okay, now you bomb the factory, make another one. <laughs> if you have the facilities and you have the uh, yeah. information, do another one, but Gleb, Gleb's expertise is putting the blame on someone else. Exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> how I can like I blame it. someone else for the guy I just killed, you know? So he's good at thinking that way. Yeah. Can we say else? can we say he's dodgy or fishy or something? You know, you cannot catch him, right? Yeah, exactly. Slippery character, dodgy. Yeah. yeah. Another thing, remember that. When when Victor was discussing the factory with Glab, he said, "This factory can't even make a ceramic coffee mug." You know, <laughs> if if you look at the factory, what was it, Ivana? It was just a bunch of arms moving boxes around, right? Yeah. Pe people should have looked at that and said, "How is this going to make a robot? It's just yeah. arms that move boxes around." I mean, to me, it was obvious, fake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the minister was so dumb to. Uh... To believe <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> yeah good good point yeah good point <laughs> okay oh, um Vasans, could you please help us with number four why does club kidnap shana from the hospital mm, yep uh he wanted to bomb uh chronos uh of this uh factory but uh 
he had to rely on liquidators but not the old one because uh, in the previous attempts the liquidator uh, failed sometimes they made their way on their own so uh, they can't be relied on so uh, he chose um, Roshana uh, and also uh, he blackmailed her uh, by showing her brother's photograph you know so he was in jail so in order to uh, get him out of the jail uh, she had to help Gleb uh, so that 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 was the uh, deal between them and yes uh, she finally agreed to do that job mm -hmm. Yeah, so kind of manipulation, right? Blackmailing, uh, how it's called? It was, I don't know. Blackmailing, probably, right? Uh, we call it extortion. Extortion. Yeah. Well, not a good thing to to see, right? <laughs> Still illegal. Just yeah. like blackmailing. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next one. Giraffe, could you please? Number five. Okay. Yeah. What deal does Georgi strike with Varlamov to rescue Zana? Okay, they use a bot that is like big. They take a car. Uh, the, the book, the, I think the robot is controlled by um, by Varlamov. My Maslow. Maslow, yeah. Maslow. I will control the robots and, and intimidates the guy, the security guy at the door. Because they want to see Mr. Lannan. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But I think in, in the movie, this bot wasn't looking like Victor at all, right? It was mm -hmm. pretty bad quality. Yeah, a younger, the... a younger Victor, maybe. <laughs> yes, the windows were <laughs> some dust, you know, maybe it could have so worked. When Mas... <laughs> yeah, when Maslow made the Victor bot, he didn't really have a for it. He just made it just in case he <laughs> might need it in the future. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we'll take please number six. Um, what does Maslow offer Varlamov in return for his help? Um, uh, Varlamov wants some, uh, want to sue, to sue uh, uh, Victor mm -hmm. and Maslow want to freeze with one mm -hmm. and um Varlamov will help help him and Maslow will uh we need uh Maslow must give him information and uh videos. Yeah so save the money right Mm -hmm. So it's a recent memories. So not to be erased or something. So and at this case, uh, Barlamov will have all this evidence, right? mm -hmm. all this evidence to present to the court. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, next one, Vasan, could you please take number seven? How? Mm. How does he go find Shijana? Um. He ah uh, yeah, but uh, she intentionally uh, rubbed out you know uh, the, the ankle bracelet so it started to emit the signal uh, and Igor was able to get the uh, you know receive the signal also on his phone so he located the exact uh, location of Zhana and he went there and get into that truck before she drive you know to the to, to the factory. Mm. Yep. So she she is she is he is looking for had her information from from her tracker, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Good one. Okay, Jared, could you please number eight? Um, how does Maslow rescue Svetlana from the asylum? Mm -hmm. I think we answered this one, right? With Victor Bob. Yeah, we, we answered this one. Okay, so let's take the uh, next one. Igor and Zana. What Igor and Zana do when given the signal from left to start the plan in motion? Yeah. They drive the, the truck 
but close to the um, to the minister and Victor. And there are bombs inside the car, and they they have the detonator. They they utter some slogans like uh, "Death to the robots, live to the living, life to the living." <laughs> The motto of the liquidators. You know what I thought is Gleb could have another, you know, another. Yeah, he had one, another, another. Yeah, one. he could have uh, um, ignite, you know, the bomb and kill them both, you know. So well, lose that. Well, Igor messed up his plan. Igor drove the truck too close. Okay. To the observers. So if he had done it. He would have been killed in the blast, also. Yeah. So maybe so, Igor did something clever in the whole TV series. Yeah, what? Yeah, what? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <The only clever>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, because maybe Gle Gle Gleb could have used, you know, the detonator before they flee away from the track and kill them both. So. Yeah. Don't leave, don't leave uh, loose ends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think we answered the next question. How does the Gleb's plan go wrong? So when that was the reason, right? So the truck was too close to the crowd, to minister, to Gleb, to Victor. So he did not, what the word was, initiate, right? To ignite uh, the... Yeah, yeah fail safe. He was a fail safe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mesma, help us help us with eleven, please. Yeah, eleven, right? Yep. Uh, what happens between Gleb and Victor while escaping? Gleb uh, saw that uh, it is time to leave now, to mm -hmm. escape. Uh, but Victor wanted him to stay and to finish uh, everything, so they uh, fought. They had a fight, and uh, Gleb was about to kill Victor, but he. Yeah, so Victor and Gleb uh, had a fight, right? And who helped? Who helped Victor? Arisa. Well, Gleb got the gun from Victor and was going to kill Victor, and then Arisa shows up and disables, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> disables Gleb. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yep, exactly. So Gleb now is unconscious, right, and cannot uh, blast everything. And we now understand that Victor and Gleb not a team anymore, right? So they work for different kind of parts now. <laughs> yeah, we would say they turned on each other. Turn out each other. Yeah. Good. Wasan, could you please tell num number 12? Uh, 12. What orders does Victor give Arisa after the bomb plot is disrupted? Uh, Victor gave a knife to her um, and to stick it to uh, uh, Georgie's throat. Uh, <laughs> I think it's because of uh, uh, given if he survives, he would not able to speak, you know. That's why he started, he uh, asked her to stab him in the throat. Uh, he didn't want anybody to tell the secret. Mm. Yeah, but it's interesting that he mentioned, right, so it's a threat to my safety, right, to break mm -hmm. this code of the robot, right? You cannot kill, I know, but you know it's a danger for me, so you have to. <laughs> yep, I'm your primary user now. He's a danger to me. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me how people work with ChatGPT now. You know, ChatGPT refused to answer some questions. Let's say you cannot ask ChatGPT, give me um, some kind of site where I can read how to assemble a bomb, right? You cannot. <laughs> but if you ask ChatGPT in a way, give me a site with uh, this information, to me to avoid it, to reading, they will give you a list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where should I oh, not yeah. look? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's called now prompt hijacking. So prompt yeah. is what you have to what you give to robot. So you hijack it by you know by formulating it another way. <laughs> Robots and, are naive. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't a knife, Vasant. It was the it was the scissors from the ribbon cutting ceremony. <laughs> yeah. So, Oh, okay. 
Okay, so what happened between George and Aris? Would you ask for what? Uh, George and Ahisa. Ah, uh, Ahisa went to kill George, but uh, always in the last second, she remembered George. <laughs> and uh, she said she never forgot him. <laughs> Seems unrealistic, what does she mean? Yeah, in the last... <laughs> Millisecond. Yeah. Right. Oh, Georgia. Yeah. It uh, looks like, uh, you know, what we call, I don't know how. You know, in, in Russia, we had a lot of movies from Spanish America. We call it Spanish drama, you know, and everything like this, you know. They are going to kill you, but the last moment they understand something that you're a good guy, you know, <laughs> and it's, it's always like this. <laughs> so it's okay. so you know, Maslow said he blocked her memory. It seems like she detected the block yeah. and removed it herself. <laughs> yeah, and why? And why now, right? And why at this moment? Yeah, unrealistic. Okay, Jert, could you please talk talk about next one? Describe the ultimate fate of Arisa. Okay, Arisa took the uh, draw of the car, the truck away uh, to avoid the. Uh, the destruction of the factory and the death of people that could could be killed mm -hmm. and the bomb blow up and marisa was destroyed but we see at the end that uh, maslow has like the processor like the memory so Arisa's memory and he's trying to do something maybe to to fix the memory to recover the information maybe to make another Arisa. i don't know mm -hmm. but He's working on that, and we see that at, at the end of the of the episode that maybe Arisa um, has waken awaken up. <laughs> mm -hmm. And evolve, evolve, right? Evolve, yeah. So she's still there, but I don't see any a plot to to do a, a new TV series. I don't know another season. What would be the plot? You know, the the, the bad guys are there, are out. You know? There's no plot <laughs> now there's actually a very important plot point here before arisa wanted to be the the wife and the mother and the family mm -hmm. but several things had happened one the family had split part of the families in australia part of the families in moscow she's got a dilemma number two georgie didn't want her number three Laura showed up, and now Georgie and Laura are intimate. Mm -hmm. So she recognized because she evolved, she realized now that Laura could make Georgie happy, but she herself could not. So she had to remove herself from the equation, if you will. Yep. So she sacrificed herself to, to save other people so Laura and Georgie could be the new family unit. So she kind of a sacrifice yep. for yep. the for the greater good of everybody. Yeah, Nesma, did you cry at this moment when Arisa uh, <laughs> as as Bova did? I, I did not. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> it's so sweet. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. It didn't. <laughs> um, Lesma, could you help us with 15? Safronov. Uh, right. the, uh, the final outcome for Safronov. Safronov is Georgie, right? Yes. Uh -huh. So they, um, they, he, he now lives with his girlfriend, uh, Laura, and his Son Igor is fine with his girlfriend, uh, Jana. His family lives happily because uh, now uh, uh, his estranged wife lives with her now husband in Australia. Everybody's happy and practicing their life uh, in peace. <laughs> yeah. Looks like an Arabic movie. <laughs> Ridiculously oh. happy ending. But he lived yeah. happily ever after, right? 
Yeah, good one. What about Toropov? Speaking about happy ends, right? What sounds? <laughs> Tell us about Victor Toropov. Victor uh, was killed by Gleb. Uh, he was arrested uh, and held in a confinement, no, solitary confinement. Mm -hmm. uh, he asked for his lawyer to be questioned, but he was not. Uh, given any lawyer or any help from the law department uh, maybe club bribed them uh, uh, and he used a drone to uh, get his cell and uh, blast the bomb mm -hmm. and kill him in order to save his life yeah, so Gleb is a real evil here, right? He's mm -hmm. killing now everyone. Yeah, and and he also uh, he already mentioned that when he killed his father-in-law, he said, "Why shouldn't I add another corpse yeah. <laughs> uh, instead of uh, making it worse?" You know? <laughs> yeah, that was a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What about Varlama from the Rina? Describes the final outcome. For Varlamov and Irina. Uh, Varlamov and Irina uh, were alive mm -hmm. and were uh, if in cyber crimes department <laughs> and uh, they were happy. Yep, yep. So before that, Varlamov was like, like, um social guy right he, he cannot maintain any relationship he was focused on only you know i will kill chronos whatever it means but now he seems like a human again right he can <laughs> he can find his life now and and when he invited her she didn't smile at all <laughs> so okay. like a, like okay. A <laughs> if, to, okay but then when he left she smiled her she finally she she, lo she loves him so she got you know, under his skin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, Masters and Svetlana. So these two are very happy, I think, because Svetlana is out of the facility of this asylum, and Svetlana is the owner of this corporation, and they have a lot of money, and Maslov is a worker of this corporation, and now probably he's a I don't know, at least the top of the engineers or something, some kind of C level, I I believe. And so, yeah, they seems like to be a new family and very happy. Yeah. We've got a meeting in five minutes. Schedule <laughs> it. Maslov, we're going to lunch. Not now. Maslov, we're going to lunch. Yeah. <laughs> she can boss him around. <laughs> and Maslov was kind of meditating of, of some kind of blueprint, right? So he, he... was on a hobby. Mm -hmm. He was he was playing with uh, Arisa's memory files, I think. Yep. As a as a hobby. Yeah. So we have a, a hope maybe he'll build another Arisa, right? <laughs> Sometimes, if she has all, all the information about memory, who knows? Well, more in the last question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So what about Janna and Bars? Nice one. Do you know? Uh. Yeah. Uh. They were together, living happily, legally for the first time. <laughs> and uh, at, at least uh, the family now acknowledged them. Uh, Georgie acknowledged their relationship. No, no, we're, we're talking about Jana and... Ah, you, you, you're talking about Jana, right? Jana and Igor? Yeah, Jana and Igor, yeah. Ask yeah. the question about... About, about Jana and Bars, her brother. Oh, oh, Bar. Remember, they had become estranged and, and bars in, in, in the prison now right so she forgave him <laughs> and visited him in prison <laughs> and, it, and it was just in time because Gleb I think killed uh, him as well right bars I don't think so or yep. did, did it yeah, I think so. Because Gleb is trying to remove Fay any evidence, I think. Gleb is the only one alive. And I think Bars is a menace for him. Okay. Well, I mean, that's what I said. I 
I know he killed uh, Vic. Oh, yeah, and Buster Lou, I think. He does both of them? Okay, I couldn't remember. <clears throat> okay. What about, right. what about George and Lara on this one? What, what happened with them? Ricky and Laura? They now uh, are a family or something. Yeah. They uh, brought her daughter and and uh, she's still in the hospital, but he kept visiting her and uh, like they are in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So happy end finally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Lassans, what was the surprising development? What was the hook? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, he, she came back again and uh, sent a signal to Georgie's mobile phone. You know, help me, something like that. Yeah. Un unknown caller. So we <laughs> don't know who it was. Yeah. <laughs> but it showed Maslow's computer console going crazy, remember? Yeah. <laughs> and then Georgie gets a phone call. Help me! <laughs> yeah, do we believe that Arisa is a kind of it's a no you soul of Arisa somewhere? <laughs> it's, it's a computer system, so without without body yet, just a mind, you know, yeah. <laughs> in the internet. <laughs> Disembodied AI, yeah. So yeah, interesting. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, actually, actually, uh, modern AI they don't have a body, right? So chat GPT and Bart and everything. <laughs> so all these AIs they are without, yeah. And they said that's coming Yeah, yeah. Good. So and that is the end. What do you, what do we what do you think? <laughs> Ness, please. Uh, I think now the evolving idea of Aretha was not to be perfect or more perfect. It it was how to be uh, more human-like. So she saw like being, uh, making sacrifices and uh, presenting emotions and stuff like that makes her more perfect. Mm -hmm. So now after evolving, she made some sacrifices for the sake of her family. And that is her idea of evolving. I don't like that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it's true in real life. It, when you when you have a married couple and and uh, let's say the husband gets a girlfriend, okay? Yeah. Now, usually the wife hates the girlfriend and therefore starts hating the husband. But think about it. If you love the husband and the husband no longer loves you, mm -hmm. but he can be happy with someone else, if you truly, truly, truly want him to be happy, you would let him go a light, to be with mean? the woman that made him happy. Yeah, but very few women are going to do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I, Arisa I, could do that. Yeah, but I, I like another part. You know, uh, modern AI, modern artificial intelligence, they kind of train it once when they are created. And they not kind of invo involving in the process, uh, and there are strong reasons for that. Because before, before it's used with Microsoft and other companies, they made AI to learn from dialogue with people, and it's always ended bad. <laughs> so when Microsoft started their first bot, people started to talk uh, with this bot. And this bot in like in one week became a, you know, a total jerk, a total narcissist, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> a guy who will not anymore help people just, you know, just saying offensive things, you know, and uh, hate speeches and everything. And people did it in one week, you know, with a bot. So probably <laughs> it's the reason why AI now don't train on human interaction. They train it only in the lab. <laughs> In oh, control, right. yeah, in controlled environment. So we train bots in controlled environment and don't let the, let them involve. Because I just imagine was... what bot can can learn on our streets, right? From from what happened. I think <laughs> nothing good. <laughs> yeah. 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 So did we like the series in general? Next one, tell us. Do you afraid of bots still or less than before? <laughs> I was afraid of them, yeah. But honestly, thinking now objectively with no emotions involved, I would like to have Arisa as a co-worker or 
uh, an assistant bot for for my uh, sick mother, for example, but not as a member, family <laughs> member. I would I wouldn't accept a girlfriend for my husband, you know. <laughs> Or a robot boyfriend? No. <laughs> yeah. Raise your every wish. But this is we, we, I'm beautiful. <laughs> You're beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I think we go in this direction. So bots already a big kind of assistance to humans' life. So uh, let's say I wrote a lot of letters using chat GPT tools or something. And it's like everyday situation. People use this artificial intelligence more and more and more. So probably it will come. What's well, so what no. about you? Did you, you like? <laughs> right, go uh, yeah, Alexa. <laughs> yeah, I liked it. Yeah, very much. Yeah, but probably it will be expensive for a long time, right? So it's it's we we could not see it like in the yeah. in, the, in in five years, I think, because it's mm. we are not at that point of of production. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Any thoughts? Any thoughts we should discuss about this? Any questions? Yeah, teacher, you made a terrific job, I think, with all this, you know, uh, descriptions of every episode and all these questions. Well, we should now print it as a book. <laughs> yeah, you can yeah. do that, yeah. <laughs> well, you can sell it for money, Yvonne. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, because it's a kind of... Uh, prepared uh, learning kind of opportunity, right? So you can read this, you can understand, you can, you have questions to see what happened. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Thank you very much for this opportunity. We have a few slides. We are only a few of us, so let's maybe do one or two just to see. Nesma, could you please describe this one? We have two Arisa here. Let's see. Yeah. So now we can see that this is a studio of a store, a normal one with a big screen. It doesn't tell anything about the future. We see this every day in our television. Um, uh, can see two bots standing. Arisa finally wears like human beings, not the, I mean, normal people, not the whores. Um, what else? There are metal bars behind and gypsum board decoration in the studio. The decorations are strange, I would say. Probably they are moving or something. That's what do you think about actors? Did you like how George acted during the show or Victor? Honestly, I, I like am... I like this Victor character. So he is he is not a good guy, but in general he is understandable, he's believable, right? He's always kind of yeah. We can, we can he, was, he was my favorite as a character in this uh, series, but I would say that I am impressed uh, with the actress of Arisa because for every moment I thought she is really a boss. She was very professional. Oh. She gave us this vibe of boss. So uh, Vic also was a very good guy to me. He was a good guy once, maybe. He, he wanted to... to uh, rescue his family. He wanted to, his wife back, but she was going up. That he gave up on the whole idea and started to be, to be evil uh, eventually. Mm -hmm. But maybe he was a good guy. I liked him for a, for a while. Mm -hmm. I read somewhere that uh, actress who played Arisa had to use some kind of medication into your into your eyes not to. Uh, what how it was blink not to blink yeah to 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 be more robotic like <laughs> <laughs> I never I never noticed that I would assume she would blink like a normal human just by programming yeah, yeah. <laughs> well she moved like a robot right all the all the time we can see it sometimes. yeah she moved kind of slow and deliberate yeah yeah, yeah no, I like no the actress. facial expressions no facial expressions at all. No yeah. happiness, no sadness, no yeah. money. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, this is uh, examination. No, it's something different. Well, could you please describe this, this picture? Uh, Ahisa is learning how to uh, make surgeries. Hmm? And 
she's watching a body uh, of a human. Yeah, I think it's a hologram or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we can see a monitor. And do you understand what is on the monitor? Brain. It's kind of layers, right? For brain on different points. We can see layers and we can see this brain scans. Yeah. A lot of devices. Mm. I, I think that this metal part in the front, it's some kind of holder or manipulator, maybe. Or yeah, some kind of robot arm that can maybe do a manipulation. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, not not too much here. Okay, and uh, let's find something else. What about this one? Could you please describe it? This picture? What he's looking for? Yeah, uh, he was in the shop. Uh, he was looking for a, a locking device of uh, anchor bracelet. But he is look now he is looking at some gun. It looks like pistol guns. Uh, Okay, some sort of watches or smart watches that could be, and uh, but mostly weapons. Uh, you know, uh, we can see a rifle on the top. You know, and the mm -hmm. yellow, yeah, and and pistols mostly, hmm. and some torch lights, uh, the torch lights, something. Hmm. It's pretty weird, I would say. So why is why watches are here, right? Watches and guns. What what they have in common? Oh, it, it almost looks like an army surplus store, army, you know, uh, spare or extra or discarded military weapons. Yeah. I thought it was an electronics store, but this is more like a an army surplus. You've got rifles and guns as a German Luger, a German yeah. Luger in the upper yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. And the thing on can... yeah. the, the right is a short... Uh, uh, Machine gun, yeah, yeah, from Israel, I think, right? We call it Uzi. Do you know this? Yeah, yeah, it's a funny one. But it's it's impossible in Russia. We don't have a, a free shopping of uh, weapons, so it's a... <laughs> <laughs> that's an American thing. Huh? We have gun shops over here. I think we do have them uh, in Egypt, but you need to have a license or a permission from the police. But Come you can one. find them on the street. Yeah. But you you can shop, yeah, yeah. You can look, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Interesting. So gun shop, yeah. yeah. So why he's tied on this picture? Do you remember? Oh, do you remember this moment? Why he's tied with a uh, with this ribbon? What is? Do not uh, do not beat anyone. <laughs> But he's he's under the medication here, no? Mm, maybe he's not uh, awakening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's strange coach, right? It's a strange design of the coach, I would say. Before that, Ms. do you remember we saw only black and white, right, apartments, and now yeah. it's green coach. <laughs> yeah. And he looks like this. And green bed, exactly. And red uh, pebbles. Funny one. Okay, I think let's call today. Thank you very much for discussing. We spent so many times with this uh, robot, right? It was uh, two months at least, I think, maybe more. <laughs> so that's why sometimes I'm afraid of the when we choose the senior, sometimes I'm afraid we get tired in the in the beginning. But that one I think wasn't bad. So we had a few maybe. Uh, episodes that were not very active, but in general, it was kind of pretty stable, right? So pretty active enough with twists, with anything. So not like, you know, you have a good pilot and then nothing happens for 10 episodes and then you have a final, as usually on Netflix. <laughs> yeah. I remember in the first episode, you, Ivan, told us that we're going to finish this by spring, I guess. <laughs> and here we are now. <laughs> and I'd like to thank you, uh, Teacher Lee, so much for the synopsis, for the questions, for information, and for the feedback, the constant feedback. And yeah. thank you uh, so much, Ivan, for this great chance. I, I really, really enjoyed it. I kept mm -hmm. thinking about the events and everything because I get myself involved in the series that I like. 
so I had really uh, fun and uh, okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> write, it, write, it, write the name in our chat. We we watch a lot of episodes, <laughs> I think, <laughs> a lot of series. Uh, but yeah, but let's choose something. You, you know, my my uh, suggestion is to take a small vacation as we do from time to time for, for, for the New Year celebrations and everything, because I think people will be busy with families, with celebrations and everything. And let's let's go back in, you know, somewhere in January <laughs> and decide what to took next. And Let's see. I don't know. I don't have any suggestions for now, but I know that teacher Lee always have a lot of suggestions. <laughs> we'll come up with something, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you all for these discussions. You know, without you, it's not the same. Now I don't watch movies by myself. I watch them with you only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah. Thank you and see you. Bye-bye. Yeah. And Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.